know you guys are all anxious to get into cars, but I want to take a few moments to talk about what makes this car very special. Also, you've heard that we're moving to turbocharged engines. So our 3.5 liter V6 is moving to a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, and our 2.4 liter four cylinder is moving to a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. We've got a third generation of our hybrid power plant. Looking at the 1.5 a little closely, we've got 192 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque. Uh, key here is when you compare it to the outgoing 2.4 cylinder, you can see that the torque curve, power comes on much earlier and it's much higher. So it gives power on demand to the customer and it gives a great drivability uh, aspect to the car. Similar story here with the 2 liter. We've got 252 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. That's the highest torque rating for an Accord ever. And you can see by the graph, torque comes on very early and much higher than the outgoing V6. Now, a few of the key engine technologies that focus on a few of the areas here when it comes to torque and response, emissions, and refinement, we've got items like the low inertia turbo of the 2 liter, which is shared with the Type R. Little different spec, but similar design. And then we've got a four to two exhaust cylinder head on one five that really improves the flow to the turbochargers, all the way to a secondary balance shaft that improves refinement. When we look at the transmission side of the equation, on the one five we've got a CVT that's been optimized for the torque converter and the characteristics of the turbocharged engine, and it's actually been lowered in terms of the gear ratio by 11%. When we look at the six speed manual for the one five, we've got improved NVH and improve shift quality. <coughs> On the two liter side, we've got an all new 10 speed automatic transmission. That's actually 22 pounds lighter than the current, and it's got a wide range of gears, giving you a shorter first gear, a taller uh, top gear, giving you the responsiveness and the fuel economy that you're looking for. And on the six speed, we've got improved MDH, improved torque capacity, and part of that is because of the fact that this unit is shared with the Type R. Now looking at body and rigidity, the team did a great job of making sure that they were able to bring the weight down but increase the rigidity, which is a huge accomplishment. And part of that is because of the fact that we use 29% ultra high strength steel. That's the highest application of any Honda to date. And we've used other items like the short pitch spot well and the use of high performance adhesives. Overall, the chassis design, the concept was to improve the steering feel, lower the center of gravity, improve comfort and handling at a high level and reduce the overall weight. Part of that, we lowered the center of gravity 1.5% and lowered the roll inertia by 4.3%, which as most of you know, it helps improve the vehicle dynamics. And hopefully that's something you guys will get a chance to experience and feel in the big part today. When it comes to the front suspension, the current car has an eight-arm design. We've moved to an L-arm design with a hydraulic bush. You can see here at point C, and what that does is it improves the stability and ride comfort and also improves MVH. We also have a new dual pinion variable ratio, EPS. And what that does is it changes the ratio as you change your steering angle. And it really improves linearity and traceability of the steering, improving your feel and giving you a lot of high-speed stability with a low-speed response. Now, on our touring models, we have an adaptive damper system. What that does is it actively senses what's going on with the road and varies the uh, amount of dampening that you have. And you can see here in the black line, that's the conventional type where the dampening force is fixed. Depending on your drive mode, when you're in normal mode, you can see that range in blue where it has the adjustability. When you hit sport mode, it actually expands that so the adjustability is a little bit higher. Now speaking of drive modes, depending on which drive mode you're in, you can see the areas that it impacts. So when you're in sport mode, It'll change the setting on the dampers and steering for the touring models. It'll also change the throttle map, the shift map. And when you're looking at the eco side of it, of course, that will impact the, the driving up the uh, throttle map as well as AC operation. So you guys will have a chance to punch the buttons and uh, see the differences in different modes. Now, overall, they did a, the team did a great job in targeting reducing weight. And you can see here from an LX that has 114 less to EX on a 2 that has 187 less. We've dropped weight at every trim level. Uh, just a side note, where you see NA, these are new trims, so we don't have a surrogate for that, but we'll get to that a little bit later. They've also done a great job taking a look at aerodynamics and improving that. They've made a 3% improvement in aero by employing certain things like active shutter grills, air curtain, and floor devices.
and really focusing on cabin quietness as well. Taking a look at the hardware side, of it. again, using the high performance adhesive that I mentioned earlier to help seal the cabin, uh, using acoustic spray foam, which is a first for a pour, and also looking on the tech side of it, where we've actually added another microphone to the active noise control system. And if you don't know what that is, that's kind of like having a set of Bose noise canceling earphones. It takes care of muffling out some of that ambient noise that comes through the cabin, as well as using a noise reducing wheel, which is an accord first, and that helps take care of some of the resonance that you hear coming through the tires.